Good morning. This is Jason Dean coming live at you again for an, from another film for a, another film fanatic show. It is uh, Sunday at about uh, eleven nineteen. Unusually warm weather. Uh, it's been in the forties uh, almost every day. Um, it's crazy. It rained. We had some snow on Friday with some rain, but it then it mostly turned into snow. But it was not very much snow. It was like a few inches, but it's been pretty mild this winter. Holy mackerel! We've had it was maybe one or two weeks where it felt like it was pretty cold, but pretty wild. So anyway, hope everyone's doing good. It is Sunday, the uh, the you know Sunday 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 for a lot of people is a good day to watch movies, and uh, you know I'm a big fan. But hey, you know every day is a good day in my household to watch movies, so it doesn't really matter. Like I always said too, I I am a you know a person that doesn't really watch movies during the day. I I like. For me, I mean, not only I'm you know a huge movie fan, but I love watching movies usually at night because I find it well just really relaxing and kind of therapeutic. It it, it does a it really helps me um, you know kind of unwind from from a day from the day. You know, if say if if I've had a you know a busy day or a stressful day or whatever, it's uh, it always kind of calms me down and gets me, you know, in a place of where, you know, I can kind of decompress. And so, so it's kind of, you know, a big part of it is like, it's, it's therapeutic and it's, you know, it's great. And lately I've been doing lots of shows and I've been really immersed in the Game of Thrones universe and I've been really loving it. I am almost, well, a little ways to go, but I'm almost done with season five and there's two more seasons to go uh, seven seasons in total i believe so i've had a lot of um i don't even know how to put it but pain in the ass uh friends i love them to death but i've had multiple people come up to me just and it will come up in conversation you know i'll be talking about it um you know that I'm watching Game of Thrones or what have you, and it's happened to me um, three times, at least two or three times, where people will say, "Once you get to the well, once you get to the sixth and the sixth and seventh season, you'll just be completely, utterly disappointed, and you'll end up like hating the show." And I'm like, What's wrong with people? Why? Why? Why do they do that? You know? Why do they do that? I just don't understand it. And to me, it's like, although it's not as extreme as somebody giving you, like, telling you what's going to happen, like the whole plot reveal and and totally spoil the experience for you. It's not to that extreme, but it's kind of the same thing. And I just think it's really rude, um, and I think it's really um, just kind of shitty. And I've had a few friends do that, and I, I just I can't stand it. So I don't know. I I love watching movies with people. I love going to the movies and watching it with watching a movie with friends. But so often it's like I come across that kind of thing, and then people who want to talk during a TV show or talk during the movie and it's so uh, I can't deal with it so that's why I'm watching it by myself not to be a complete and utter uh, dick but that's the only way I can really just you know really digest what's going on and, and get into it and so I'm really really digging it I'm hoping that those friends that have told me that are wrong just because, well, on one hand, it's because I've, I've, you know, been investing a lot of time and energy into this, and I'm really enjoying it. So I'm hoping it pays off. But I, again, you got to be subjective, and if it's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. You know, you can't, you can't let that shape your opinion per se. So anyway, so in the time, in the time, um, in between my reviews for Game of Thrones, there's so I'll, I'll have three more reviews coming. I'll have this. I'll have the fifth review, the review for the fifth season, 
and and then eventually the sixth, and then finally the seventh season. So a little ways to go, but I'm really enjoying it. So, but in between uh, the reviews for uh, Game of Thrones, I'm still doing my normal shows. Lately, I've been doing some music shows. So today is another music show, and. It's one of my favorite uh, concerts that I own. I don't own a shit ton of concerts. Um, Blu-rays and things like that. I I, I definitely have some. Um, I did one pretty recently on one of my favorite groups of all time. One of the most influential groups uh, for me. um, The Chemical Brothers. I did that uh, the other day. And I have this really great Chemical Brothers collection. But today's show is going to be on my favorite, um, and again, it's always hard to pick your favorite period of an artist or, you know, a director or or whatnot, but my favorite period for, of course, the legendary Jimi Hendrix is this this album and DVD uh, and concert right here. It's the Band of Gypsies live at the Fillmore East. This, for me, is my favorite period of, of Jimi Hendrix. Um, and I was pretty late to the game in discovering this. Of course, I grew up as a kid hearing, you know, the, the classic hits from, of course, Band of Gypsies. And it wasn't until um, probably, well, technically kind of late to the game. I mean, I always knew Hendrix, who, I always knew who Jimi Hendrix was as a kid. You know, and that was through, I didn't know anybody um, at the time, and I didn't, um, nobody in my family uh, listened to Jimi Hendrix that I know of, so I was never exposed that way. I just heard his music basically on the radio, on classic rock stations, and I always loved that stuff growing up, but I never owned any of his albums. It wasn't until, like, probably, mm, you know, my 20s when I got into Jimi Hendrix and really got into Band of Gypsies. Or um, I should say, not Band of Gypsies, uh, the Jimi Hendrix experience. That was, and and those first few albums, I really, really got into it. And then, like, fast forward many years later, they re-released or released an album, uh, I think it was called Valleys of Neptune, which was a a full-length album that Hendrix had recorded that was never released. And it was released... Um, in this beautiful package, and I remember buying that album, and I actually really love that album. I think it's one of his best albums. Uh, I think it's one of the best albums by the Jimi Hendrix Experience. Uh, highly creative, super groovy, uh, very psychedelic, and of course, all the other preceding you know albums, Are You Experience, all that stuff is of course classic. But that album was really great, and that that album really got me into Hendrix even more. And that, you know, of course, that was much later. Uh, but, and then a couple of years after that, I was uh, uh, playing in, in a band with a friend, my uh, uh, guitar player named Joel Watson. I played in a band with him for a long time. Um, an amazing guitar player in his own right. And he was, I remember one day we were talking about music and he was like, you know, we were talking about different guitar players that we both love and and so forth and it came we started talking about Hendrix and of course you know how can you not uh, be a Hendrix fan if you own a guitar really how can you not be a Hendrix fan if you're a music fan I mean it's essential and so he was talking about of course his really really deep deep love for uh, for Hendrix, but he, but then he said, "Well, my favorite album of theirs is Band of Gypsies, live at the Fillmore East." And I had never heard of that album. I had at the time, and again, this was probably, um, geez, probably twelve years ago, maybe more. A uh, very, very long time ago. And of course, Jimi Hendrix on lead guitar, Buddy Miles, 
and Billy Cox on bass. And for some odd reason, I had never, I was really, you know, always into and checking out and pretty familiar with the band of Jip, or, um, the Jimi Hendrix experience. Um, I really, really got into Mitch Mitchell as a drummer. Uh, and he remains, you know, one of my favorite rock drummers of all time. I really got into his playing. I really loved his playing because it was an interesting time for me because I had just started to, you know, grew up listening to rock and, 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 you know, and that kind of thing. And then I was also getting into jazz and trying to develop a taste for jazz. Um, and then also trying to learn jazz, uh, learn the beginning stages of jazz drumming on drum set. And for me, Mitch Mitchell was a real interesting um, musician at that point because he was obviously in the, you know in the Jimi Hendrix, you know one of the greatest bands ever, Jimi Hendrix Experience, and he was just such an energetic uh, and such a bombastic player. But I remember seeing interviews with him where he talked about his extensive love for jazz and like particularly around Elvin Jones. And so at that time, I was like trying to learn that style and trying to understand it just from the perspective of being a fan of music. And I, it was so foreign to me, I could not get into it. And it, was, it took me a while to get into jazz and really appreciate it. And now it's one of my favorite styles. And, and it was an interesting thing with Mitch Mitchell being rock, a rock player, but he also had a tremendous jazz influence. And so it kind of bridged that gap and kind of helped me develop an appreciation for jazz. It was interesting. So I always was really into Mitch Mitchell because of that. And he always had, to me, a very unique sound because of the jazz background. Another drummer, John Densmore from The Doors very similar kind of trajectory and styles and things you know coming from a jazz you know bringing this big love of jazz music to the rock context so those guys had very unique sounds because of that so and so again i never um had heard this album or had seen this band before and i remember he uh, Joel gave me a copy of the album. He burnt me a CD copy of that of the live album, Band of Gypsies, live at the Fillmore East. And I, uh, I just could not believe what I was hearing. I was completely blown away in every way. It was so funky, so raw, um, and I just automatically thought, my first reaction to listening to this album was, for me, this was, in my in my opinion, the greatest period for Hendrix. He just, his band, uh, they just um, killed it in every possible way. Because their music, the music was more, as much as I love the Jimi Hendrix experience, it felt like this band was like, like a tank it felt like a sherman tank and the groove factor was like on 11 and i mean billy cox and buddy miles like their the sound that they have was unreal and the way they locked in like i said the, the tank analogy was so was so funky um so funky it was like some of the funkiest music but yet it was like really but yet the music was really aggressive. And it was also one of the first times I saw a drummer sing with Buddy Miles playing such intense grooves, but then being able to sing also. It just blew my mind. And to me, it became, for me, the Band of Gypsies became, for me, the, like, the ultimate power trio. And even to this day, I really love hearing a good power trio. You know, you have three people covering a lot of space, covering a lot of territory. But, like, when you have a good power trio, it's like perfect symmetry. And you have all of this space, but yet it can be really uh, incredibly cohesive at the same time. And for me, the Band of Gypsies was the epitome of that. And then a few years after I heard the album, um, 
which and I got obsessed with it. I couldn't stop listening to it. I got I was in Bull Moose. Um, I probably got this about five or six years ago, not that long ago. I had heard he had told me too that there there was a a live concert uh, DVD, and he said it was just incredible. I never again I never seen it before, and I picked this up at Bull Moose, and it's a DVD. Um, format it's it's amazing like there's um th it's all black and white too which just adds so much grittiness to it but the audio is just amazing it's really raw and kind of nasty and dirty but it's it's what makes it great and this i have watched this uh so many freaking times i can't even count like this is just just the epitome of like badass in every way like I feel like Hendrix, and again, all his playing, for the most part, you know, in his great discography with the the the, the experience, and then he did, you know, series a series of different collaborations with people. Um, I just think his playing at this particular time was unprecedented, unlike anything he had ever done before. Um, I had never, never seen. Um, I don't know. I never heard a guitar player play this way before in my life. Um, it was just un unprecedented, unreal, and especially Hendrix. I just felt like he reached this point with with his playing that was, um, you know, just unheard of, un real, a real uh, unworld, otherworldly quality. This concert was uh, recorded from, in, or it took place December 31st in 69, um, in January 1970. Um, and it was all compiled from the same performance. Um, just amazing. And I highly recommend um, this album. There's a, a studio version, studio album version of this, and then there's the, the DVD. Uh, it would be awesome to get this on Blu-ray at some point, uh, but I'm pretty happy with this DVD. But this is, hands down, my favorite Hendrix period, and this is one of the most badass things you'll ever hear, and one of the most badass things you will ever see in your life. So thanks again, this is Jason Dean, and we will see you next time. Peace.